UML stands for Unified Modeling Language. It's not a programming language, but it's a set of standards for software engineers to use to visualize their work. It was first published in 2005 and most recently updated to version 2.5 in 2015. These published standards for that version are almost 800 pages long. So to make sure this doesn't turn into a lecture, we're going to cover the absolute basics here. First off, there's types of UML diagrams. There are three main types to consider here. We have behavioral diagrams, which include activity, use case, and state machine diagrams. We have structural diagrams, and then we have interaction diagrams. Something important to consider is that some people categorize interaction diagrams as a type of behavior diagram. So something a little bit like this. And the thing to know is that both capture behavior, but interaction diagrams model more complex exchanges of information between elements in a system, while a behavioral diagram is going to show changes to a system over time or a more linear movement of information. So regardless of the type of diagram, there are some common notations that you'll see as you start to dig into the world of UML. We're going to go through those right now. So first up, classes. Classes represent categories of objects, and these appear in boxes, sometimes with multiple sections that can describe the attribute, operations, or any additional information. Then you also have objects, and an object is a more specific instance of a class, so a class at any moment of time with a specific set of attributes. Those show up in diagrams just like classes, but you'll notice that the title is underlined. Then we have use cases, and in general, a use case will be represented by an oval, but the other thing to know is that this little stick figure can represent an actor, which is anything external to your system. It doesn't necessarily have to be a human, so it's someone or something that interacts with your system. We'll also see some state elements in UML diagrams, and these show the starts and ends of a process with this initial state dot and the final state dot. But then they can also be rounded rectangles that indicate how you're describing a state in your system at a specific time. So these can be a simple state or include labels and attributes and responses that get more specific about the state of your system. All right, then we have packages. These are pretty self-explanatory. They look like a package or a folder um, and they show the components of a system. And it's a good idea to include a really clear name for these packages. Frames then are used to surround your UML diagram and they help just to show the containment of that diagram. Um, in this header area, you want to make sure you always include a name that clearly describes what your diagram is displaying. Then we have components and nodes, and these are physical aspects of a system like a server or generalizations or replaceable pieces within your system. All right, notes and annotations are these little sticky note flag looking sort of thing. And these aren't part of the system, but they're an additional space to explain elements, functions, or other important details within your system. So the chance to give it more context. So when you see a note, it's definitely worthwhile to jump in and read what's in there, but understand that it's not actually part of the literal diagrammed system. And then finally we have arrows. And these, oh, I'll zoom in a little bit. We'll zoom in a little bit so that you can read these. These represent the relationships within your system. They can be a generalization, like a parent-child relationship. They can be an association, which is just a description of how things are related with your diagram. They could be dependencies that show the direction in which one element is dependent upon another, or they could be realizations that show how one element implements or creates the condition for the next element. So these are the absolute basics, but each UML diagram has their own job to do. So we're gonna walk through some of those basic 
examples. First off, to describe a static structure, you will use a class diagram like this. An object diagram shows up a lot like a class diagram, but remember that it will have that underlined class element, and that would emphasize objects and their relationships at a more specific point in time. Then we have activity diagrams, and these help you model workflows or coordinated activities within your system. Sequence diagrams most simply describe how steps are carried out. A use case diagram can help you show the expected behaviors of actors in your system, and it'll show your system's externally visible behaviors. Keep in mind that not all of these stick figures are humans. In this case, one of those actors is a central computer. State machine diagrams show the progression of states of a given entity and a behavior of that entity at different times in response to events. So these are capturing how the behavior changes throughout your system. A communication diagram shows how steps are carried out, but it emphasizes where messages are moving throughout the system, while a sequence diagram would represent how information moves over time. So again, communication represents where, while one of those sequence diagrams would represent how it moves over time. Deployment diagrams focus on the hardware or nodes within a system. These are the big picture of your system, so showing what's running and where, even on a global scale. Package diagrams show how information in larger projects is organized. And then when you want to provide a lot of specific detail about how your system cooperates to produce a combined behavior, you would use a composite structure diagram. This is like an in-depth version of a class diagram. To show how a class or interaction takes place over a specific period of time, you would use a timing diagram like this to show the connections between each of these elements. And then last, an interaction diagram. So this shows an overview of all the in interactions taking place in your system. Now, each of these diagrams will have its own set of rules and additional notations that allow you to fill it with the detail that you need. Regardless of what type of diagram you make, you can use a tool like this one, Gliffy, which has all the preloaded shapes you need to make a UML diagram.